Hey everyone, welcome to the next video of my Express.js tutorial series, where in this video we will learn about what an HTML form is and how to handle them with Express. We'll also learn about the content type HTTP header and more about post requests. So before we begin, what is an HTML form? Well, an HTML form is a group of one or more fields on a web page used to collect information. It is typically submitted to a server as a post request for processing. A common HTML form is a login form containing two inputs for username and password and a button for submitting the username and password to the server. And now, what is an HTTP POST request? Well, an HTTP POST request is used to send data to a server, often to create a resource, and the data that is sent to the server is stored in the body of the HTTP request. Here, let me give you an example of actually the structure of an HTTP request. So this right here is an example of an HTTP POST request. Specifically, this is an HTTP POST request that sends JSON data to the login route on witcode.com. We can see the method is POST, the route is dash login, so POST to dash login on witcode.com as the host. We also see content type is application dash JSON, so we know it's sending JSON data. Content length 30, which means each of these characters is one byte, so it'll be 30 bytes. So username, wit code, password, and soccer are all 30 bytes together. And also we can see it's JSON with the double quotes and um, it's just JSON structure. And that is being told to the server that this post request, the content is in application in JSON form. So when we submit a post request using an HTML form, this is the format of the request that the server will receive. But anyway, let's now talk about how to actually create an HTML form. So an HTML form is defined inside HTML form tags. So like this, we have two form tags here. And this HTML form element is a container for different types of input. For example, this HTML form can contain checkboxes, text fields, radio buttons, and just send things like that. And the most commonly used HTML form element is input. So you usually see inside these form elements an input element. And this input is used to get user input. And the input element can be displayed in many different ways depending on the supplied type attribute. So it takes an attribute called type, and what we supply to this determines what it'll be. For example, if we submit radio, then this makes this input a radio button. If we do type equals checkbox, then this makes the input a checkbox, and so on. And so let's create an HTML form now. And remember, we will be doing this using pug. So if we go into our views, and we create a new file, and we call it login.pug, this is where we can create an HTML form. So let me make this form real quick, and then I'll go over what I did. So remember, these pug files that we use will be rendered into HTML files. And so what this form consists of is two text fields and one submit button. So we can see we have a text field here, which specifies username, a text field here that specifies password, and another input where the type is submit that makes it a button. And we also want the information in this form or the username and password to be sent to our login route, so we specify the action as login and possible values for the action attribute are either a relative or absolute URL, which here we are, of course, providing a relative URL. Also, the form elements method attribute, so this here, specifies how the data is sent, and we want our form to be sent as a post request, and this is why we specify method as post in this pug code. And we're also adding some styling. So as seen here, we are adding some CSS styling to our pug form. So let's create the CSS file. So if you remember, inside our public CSS, this is where our static content is housed, let's actually create login.css. And now I'm just going to add some styling just to make our form look a bit nicer, and then I'll go over what all this means. But 
So essentially what the CSS does is centers our form on the web page, aligns the items in the form, adds some color to the form, and a few other things. So I'm not going to go too in depth into that because that's not the purpose of the course, but basically it's used to center forms, center things using um, Flexbox, and add some style. But now let's create a route to display our pug form. So inside our routes folder, what we're going to do is let's create another folder called login, and then let's place an index.js file in here, and then let's create an express router like we've been doing previously. So we require express, and then we create a router object, which is basically a mini express app that we can attach routes to to basically organize our project. So this will be end up being the dash, dash login route, a request, response, and what we want to do is render our pug login file. And then we want to export this router object. But let's not forget to register this new express router with our express app by placing the following in our main index.js file. So let's create login equals require dot dash routes dash login. And then we'll do app dot use dash login and then not console log, but then pass in this login object. And now let's navigate over to dash login and see what it looks like. So let or localhost, I believe it's one, two, three, four, and then dash login. And so this isn't right, which essentially looks like um, it's doing a display as um, a row instead of a column. So let's open up our inspect tools. And that's why, because we didn't nest things inside our form. So it'll display it all as a row by default. So in here, if we just indent this, I believe that should change it back to normal. So let's run it again. Sweet. So now we can see what our form looks like. And so now this is what we can use as an HTML form to submit data to our server or express application and a post request. And so what we need to do now is configure Express to handle this form data. So let's go back into our code. And to handle form data with Express, we need to make use of two middleware functions, express.json and express.url encoded. So we know how to add middleware, specifically global middleware, by using, let's do it up here, app.use. And then this one is called express dot json and then we have another one we need called express dot url encoded and we pass an option in here as extended equal to true and so it is very important to place these global middleware functions above where we registered our login router with our express application so above this here because remember middleware functions are executed in order so we want our JSON parsing middleware to be executed before we reach our post route. But now why do we need these middleware functions? Well, we need the express.json and express.url encoded middleware functions for post requests. This is because post request data is sent in the body of the request and we need a way to access it. And these middleware functions allow us to access this data. And so now let's go more in depth onto this. So what is express.json? Well, the middleware express.json is a built-in express middleware that parses post requests with JSON data in their body. So express.json expects post request data to be sent in a JSON format. So for example, earlier when I was giving you an example of post request data, it, what express.json is expecting is data in the form of JSON. So it'll be like username what code and then um, another one like password password because this is JSON data which is double quotes and then it's essentially kind of like a, um, a JavaScript object but specifically express.json parses requests where the content type header is application-json 
So it looks for the header in the request and it looks for content type and then um, application dash JSON, which is very common. And now just note, just a note that if there is no body to parse, so there's no request data, or no data in the request body, um, if the content type is not matched, so it doesn't match application JSON or an error occurred, then the request body will be an empty object. And we'll see more of this soon. But real quick, what is this content type header? Well, content type is an HTTP header that indicates the media type of the sent or received resource. For example, a GIF image would have a content type of not application.json, but something like image-gif. And an HTML file would have a content type of, say, text-html. So that's all there is about express.json. But now, what is express.url encoded? Well, the middleware express.url encoded is another built-in express middleware that parses post requests with URL encoded payloads. And specifically, express.url encoded expects post request data to be sent as keys and values separated by an ampersand with an equals between the key and value. So instead of this here, which express.json was expecting the data to be in the format of, what URL encoded expects data to be in the format of is username equals wit code and then ampersand password equals my password. So we can see we have our key here, our value here, um, with the equal sign between them, and then their other values are separated by an ampersand. But specifically, express.url encoded parses requests where the content type header is application dash x www form URL encoded. So remember how, where was it? previous one I said was application.json. Well, what express URL encoded looks for is application dash X and then www form URL in, in coded. And so we have also seen that this express.url encoded also accepts a configuration object as an argument. And one of the configuration options is extended, which is here, which is false by default. But setting extended to equal to true allows for objects and arrays to be encoded in the URL encoded format. And this basically just means it makes working with URL encoded data similar to working with JSON, because it's nicer to work with data in this JSON format than that key value pair that I was showing you. But anyway, let's create a post route now that can handle this data that is sent from our login form. So we're gonna do that inside our login route. And we're gonna call router dot not get, but post this time, because it's a post route. And then our request and response. And then what we're gonna do in here is let's just access the response or the request data. And we'll send it back to the client. So we'll do response dot send, we don't need this auto import, but express or response dot send. And let's do, let's say your username is dollar. Remember it's in the body of the request. So it's request dot body and then the name, we'll go over this more. And then, and your password is request.body. password. So now when we fill out this form here and click submit, we can access the username and password by using request.body.username. So where was it? request.body.username and request.body.password. And so now before I show you more of this, let's actually just go in here and test this out. So let's say wit code and then my password. And if we click login, don't want to save these, but your username is wit code and your password is my password. So we can see our login route is working correctly. But let's go back into here and now let's talk about what is request.body. 
Well, the body attribute of the request object contains key value pairs of data submitted in the request body, and it is undefined by default, but is populated by the body parsing middleware express.json and express.url encoded. So this here is what is responsible, these two methods here, for populating our request.body. And now you might be wondering also, why is it .username and .password? Well, this is because of the name attribute on our input HTML element. So see how we have name username here and name password. Well, this corresponds with rec.body.username and rec.body.password. So it is this name attribute here that basically identifies the input when we submit it. So let me just show you one last thing about this form, and it is looking at our dev tools. So also we have this open, and let's look at our network tab. And when we submit this form, so we press login, we can see here is a post request. See if I can zoom into this. And if we look at our request headers, we can see the content length is 37, which is um, how long the request body was. So username, wit code, password, my password. We can also see the content type is application dash X WW form URL encoded. And that means it will be handled by our middleware here, this URL encoded. And then what it does is it attaches to our request.body, username, and password, which are equivalent to the name, username here, and name, password here. And I think we can see some also, some other things here. Well, I guess just the refer or the origin, or sorry, no, a more interesting one is in our response headers. The content type of the response is text.html because all it is is just text and HTML here. And then the content length is 62. If we count these characters, it'll be equivalent to 62. But that's just something interesting to see, um, or just, I guess, give you um, another view of this data and how it works behind the scenes. But so that's all I wanted to go over today. Um, in the next video, we're going to be going over how to connect our Express application to a database. Um, I think we're specifically going to be using SQLize. But um, besides that, I want to thank you for watching and subscribing today. Remember, the code will be available on my, um, on my website where the link is in the URL, as long as the blog format of this video. But I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today, and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.